High Adventure. Tonight's exciting story by Denver Morgan is entitled, Let Them Be Heroes. September the 12th, 1941. Albany lost with all hands. No radio contact prior to sinking. Stop. Investigating. Stop. Copy to Royal Australian Air Force Headquarters. Stop. October the 2nd, 1941. City of York sinking off Darwin. Stop. Reports indicate attack by unidentified freighter flying French flag. Stop. Copy to British intelligence. Stop. October the 29th, 1941. Pride of New England on fire, making for Melbourne. Stop. Planes intercepted by cargo vessel flying the Dutch flag. Stop. Copy to Royal Australian Navy Headquarters. Stop. Again! Good day, men. Sit down. Smoke if you want to. Uh, somebody open a window, would you? It's like the old man's shearing shed in here. <laughs> right. Now, as you know, as part of Coastal Command, our job is to help out the Navy in keeping the shipping lanes open. As you also know, our shipping losses have been pretty crook in the last three or four months. Now, in the main, this has been due to increased U-boat activity. But there's another factor which has been brought to our attention... And that's the operations of an armed enemy merchantman known as Raider G. Uh, for the gen on this operation, we have with us this morning Lieutenant Commander Watkins of Pomp... Uh, that's British Naval Intelligence. Uh, with the assistance of the slide projector, he'll give the lowdown on how this jerry operates. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Watkins. Uh, thank you, Wing Commander. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. The pictures you are about to see were taken by our agent some nine months ago when Raider G was in Kiel. Raider G is the code name we have designated. As you can see on this slide, the registered name of this vessel is the Cormoran. She was built in 1939 and was operated by the Hamburg America Line. The tonnage is 9,400, and she has four nine-cylinder diesel engines giving her 14,000 horsepower. Now, this picture is the same vessel. Notice anything different? Yeah, she's got two funnels this time, and the superstructure seems to have changed a bit. Quite correct. Let me explain. At the outbreak of war, the Cormoran was commandeered by the German Navy and fitted with six four-inch guns and one six-inch cannon, all mounted in the holds on hydraulic elevators. Beneath both sides of her bridge and below the waterline are four torpedo tubes. In addition... There are five massive guns placed strategically around her superstructure on hoists. To conceal this armament, there are hydraulically and manually operated fake bulkheads, storage compartments, and even sections of superstructure. They've got this camouflage down to a fine art, 
and the vessel, in fact, can present up to six different silhouettes. Any questions? Yes. How does she operate? Well, normally she plies all known shipping lanes, particularly the Indian Ocean. What happens is this. She'll fly the flag and take up the identity of another freighter known to be in the area, a deliberate attempt being made to appear sluggish and badly run. The targets are generally unsuspecting merchantmen. She gets in close, almost point-blank range, drops her camouflage, runs up the German flag and opens up with everything she's got. It's usually all over in a couple of minutes. She has accounted for over 200,000 tons of Allied shipping. I take it she only has a go at merchantmen. And quite frankly, she'd be no match for any cruiser or battleship. Well, gentlemen, there's very little more I can add apart from wishing you luck in your air search. Do you have any information on the crew? Yes. The captain is a man named Theodore Detmers, a professional naval officer, assisted by about 15 other officers. The crew of about 450 is made up of highly trained servicemen. Where was she last seen? Last sighting was about 200 miles west of Broome some eight days ago. And what did you say the commanding officer's name was? Theodore Detmers. Captain Theodore Detmers. There are no Detmers in Berlin, as far as I know, Oberlitenant. Why'd you ask? I just wondered, you Captain. There was these small manufacturing companies that name. I used to call on them before the war. Call on them? Yes, I was a salesman. I used to sell chemicals for cleaning out boilers. Oh. Will you stay in the Navy after this is over? I'm not sure. Perhaps there might be a better future in the merchant service. Really? Well, there seems to be a certain resentment towards officers' commission during the war time. That's amongst those who made the Navy their careers in peace. Time. Interesting. I didn't realize I made my feelings so obvious. No disrespect was intended. In fact, I wasn't referring to this ship. I don't give a darn whether you were or you weren't, so believe in von Goslin. Just do your job, and we'll get along fine. Yeah, Herr Kapitan. What's our exact position at the moment? We're 180 miles west of Fremantle. That's the major port for Western Australia. Oh, by Lieutenant, you never cease to amaze me. Your Kapitan? I am familiar with the port of Fremantle. Some 12 miles inland is a very charming city of Perth. I spent some time there in 1938. I hadn't realized you had visited Australia. How did you find the people? What the Australians lacked in sophistication, they made up with their tremendous zest for life. Until the war started, I used to write to a family I stayed with in Melbourne. My father fought in the last war. He said the Australians made very good soldiers. Yes, they were brave, like lions. It's unfortunate they were generally led by donkeys. You feel their leadership has improved, generally, I mean? Unfortunately for us, it has improved. You believe we will win? Reconnaissance aircraft, join me at the bridge. to say. They didn't use the secret call sign, but according to the information we have, the Strat Malacca is definitely bound for Lorenzo Marx, 
And she's in the correct position. And the aerial photos? Unfortunately, the cameras were set at the incorrect speed, and therefore the photos aren't very good. Frankly, I'm not sure what vessel it is. There's the possibility the cormorant sank the Stratman Lucker, and this bloke has taken her place. It's a possibility. What do you want us to do? The Navy will take over from this point. Sydney's already on its way to investigate. You blokes don't mess about. She's the best ship in the Navy. She'll wipe out anything that stands in her way. If it is Captain Detmers, he's in for a surprise. They have one order. Sink the cormoran. Gentlemen, if I can have your attention, please. I think we can assume that the reconnaissance aircraft this morning will have reported back to headquarters by this time. Those of us who were on the bridge noticed that photographs were being taken of our ship. Under expert scrutiny, we will not fool anybody. Therefore, I think we should be prepared for the arrival of an Australian cruiser. According to the information we have, there are three in the area. The Sydney... The Perth and Hobart. Before I go on, perhaps uh, Herr Werner, our gunnery expert, could tell us something of the armament we're up against. Herr Kapitan, from my information on the three vessels you have mentioned, they all have eight 15-centimeter guns, eight 10-centimeter guns, batteries of automatic flak weapons and heavy machine guns. You're well informed, but you forgot to mention that each of these vessels also carries two amphibian spotter aircraft and eight torpedo tubes. You know what is going through my mind? Up to this point, we've been lucky. We've only had to contend with lightly armed merchant freighters. We're now up against the professionals. What action are we to take when the Australian ship arrives? We'll continue to fly the Dutch flag. Only a limited number of crew will be on deck. But I look to you, Herr Werner, as the gunnery officer, that every piece of armory we have on board is fully armed and that the crews are ready. And with no hold-ups on the elevators. I take it, Herr Capitan, you're contemplating fighting it out. I'd say I'm anticipating the worst. However, we've been through this routine before. We've got away with it in the past. We must try and get away with it again. Well, there are no further questions, gentlemen. I think we all know where our duty lies. I wish you luck. <coughs> are you trying to tell me something, Oberleutnant? Lieutenant? No, Herr Capitan. <laughs> of course, I almost forgot. Heil Hitler. Tell me the worst. Which one is it? I can't quite make it out. It... Oh, give me the glasses. Yes, my dear Oberleutnant. We are indeed honored. It's the Sydney. Pride of the Australian Navy. The captain, I think, is a man called Joseph Barnett. A brilliant career officer, I'm told. Gentlemen, we had better prepare ourselves for the moment of truth. She's signaling us. W H A T. What? S H I P. What? Ship. Send a reply, but tangle the flags up. Put two of them back to front. We've got to play for time. I think they're starting the engine on one of their aircraft. If that thing gets in the air, we're finished. What are they saying now? Uh, unreadable. She's closing in. We're in communications or gun stations? Yeah, yeah, Captain. But she's signaling again. Whence, from, and visor away. Almost Victorian, charmingly put. Whence, from, and visor away. Signal back, bound from Batavia to Lorenzo Marx. She's getting closer. Get the crew to wave at them. They're allies, after all. Gunnery officer, give me the range. 800 meters on the closing. Can every gun be used? Yes, her Capitan. The decently continues her present course, it will be perfect. Capitan, they're asking for our secret call sign. How are they? Well, we've not got one. There's nothing left to do. A battle flag! Down gun shields! Commence firing! Concentrate on the fire control center. I think our engine room has been hit. Get me the engine room. Room and the crew down there. How many guns in action left, Lieutenant? Three heavy machine guns still operating, and we're still on the torpedo. Very well. Give me a general damage report. Capitan, this is Lieutenant Werner. My fire control center has been destroyed. The flak weapons are out of action. 
I have lost 75 percent of my men. How many torpedoes left? Two. Very well. We've inflicted considerable damage on the Sydney, but I think it's her turn now. Captain de Pomplum is wrecked. You may steer and tell me motor pipes have been shot away. All electrical cables broken and rotted out of action. We've got two torpedoes left. There they go now. Crazy hit the Sydney. In the right place. Lieutenant Werner is dead. All guns have stopped. It looks like it's all over. We've got her. She's blown up. Look at that. She's going. We've sunk the Sydney. Do you realize that? We've sunk the Sydney. Just there's nothing left. If we don't get off this ship, we'll be following her. Launch all lifeboats, anything that will float. Yellow, we'll hear, Capitan. This is the Capitan. Repeat, this is the Capitan. Abandon ship. Abandon ship. Is that all of us? Yeah. How many? About 400. Any survivors from the Sydney picked up? No. Some of the bodies have come to the surface, though. I never understand why they gave us that advantage in the beginning. They could have shot us out of the water. I don't think they expected us to stand and fight. They probably assumed we would surrender. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Well, we'd better decide on the plan of action. As far as I can calculate, we'll be about 200 miles off the West Australian coast. We've got enough fuel to take us about 50 miles. I think it might be better here, Capitan, to use the sail now and perhaps an auto when we get nearer to shore. I agree. Signal the other five boats to follow us. If for any reason we get separated, tell them to head due north. They must reach Australia. The Australian? How will they treat us? What do you mean, over late night? Well, here, Capitan, will they regard us differently from other prisoners of war? I mean, the manner in which we sank their ships, we... Held against them. I doubt it. They do exactly the same thing, I'm told. Your Capitan, I'm glad it's over. I have nightmares of ships exploding and men being blown to pieces and survivors barely alive, choking to death like oil-soaked gulls washed up on some beach. I, I feel no pride. I, I feel numb. I'm mentally scarred. For a salesman, that's not a bad speech. For an officer in the German Navy, it will get you a court-martial. It will go no further. I've taught myself not to sink too deeply. I've become indifferent to the suffering of my fellow men. Capitan, we can discuss the psychological consequences of our jutty little war when we're languishing in a prison camp. For the moment, let's think about staying alive. Yeah, hey, Capitan. Make the wounded as comfortable as possible. Compile a complete list of food, check our water situation, and organize a ration system. I think we should work on a maximum of ten days. Yes, Capitan, some of the wounded will never last that long. We'll do all we can for them. Those who die will be buried at sea. Your Capitan, perhaps there's still some hope for some of them. I'm sure this Sydney must have sent out a radio call when it made contact with us. They're bound to send ships and planes to I the wouldn't thing. be so sure of that. We destroyed their radio communication center. I think we can look forward to a long and unpleasant journey. See over there to the east. The weather's changing. I think visibility's going to get poor. Batten everything down over late night. We're in for a long, cold night. Line now. Over late night, wake up. Right. Hmm? Is it really? Australia? Yeah. Yeah, have a cigarette. <coughs> what is our position here, Captain? Let's see, Fremantle is about 100 miles due west. What a short time. If it wasn't for the wounded, I'd try to evade capture, but. I think our chances of getting out of Australia would be very slim, anyhow. It's getting light now, and I'm sure there'll be coastal air patrols which are bound to see us. We'll beach and give ourselves up at the earliest opportunity. Listen. Talk of the devil. He'd already be radioing our position. I think our war is over. Let's take her in. I wonder what happened to the other five boats. Who knows? It's possible they're already there. 
Start the motor. Run up onto the beach if you can. Say, yeah, hold on to your left. Looks like some type of military installation. Yes, they've seen us. There are soldiers coming down to the beach. Cut the motor. Come in. Uh, oh, thank you, Sergeant. You can wait outside. Please sit down, Captain. Cigarette? Thank you. My name's Watkins, Lieutenant Commander, British Naval Intelligence. Detmus. Theodore Detmus, Chairman Navy. Are they treating you well? I have no complaints. I'd like to inquire if my wounded are receiving medical attention. Naturally. I uh, wonder if we could come straight to the point. According to the interrogation questionnaire I've received, all members of your crew, including your first lieutenant, insist you engaged and sank the Sydney. Well? I, I find that hard to believe. I assure you, it's perfectly true. Uh, Captain Detmers, I have the fullest details of your former vessel. You'd have been outgunned and outmaneuvered by the Sydney. I cannot accept that she has sunk. We sank her four days ago. Have you had any communication from her since then? No, Captain. We're not disputing the fact that you might have engaged her and even damaged her. Possibly knocked out her radio communication center. Lieutenant Commander Watkins, when I was originally interrogated, I gave the exact position of the sinking of the Sydney to both Air Force and Naval officers. I gave this information on a humanitarian basis in the hope that there may be some survivors. Their poor visibility has restricted our air and sea search. For the last time, Commander, we engaged and we sank the Sydney. Watkins? Yes? Yes, I see. I'd like to speak to the pilot when he lands. Thank you. They've spotted wreckage from the Sydney. There is no sign of survivors. We have apparently lost 41 officers and 603 men. Commander, I lost 60 men and the Comoran. The last four days I have spent in an open boat with over 40 men wounded and dying around me. I've had considerable time to sink. And a full well, the sadness, the loss of these men will bring in my country and in yours. But let me say I'm proud to have served with such gallant comrades and proud, too, of the men of the Sydney. They upheld the finest traditions of the sea. They went down with flag flying and guns firing to the last. They found their glory. Let them be heroes. In the interests of wartime morale, the Allies gave brief mention to the sinking of the Sydney, and the full story of the encounter with the Cormoran gathered dust in military archives. Captain Detmers spent the remainder of the war in a prison camp, and on the ending of hostilities in 1945, he was repatriated to Germany. The defeated nation had long forgotten him and the men of the Cormoran. Tonight's story was based on an actual incident which took place on the 19th of November, 1941. Adventure is produced by Henry Diffenthal.